So is this skin, is this hair on it, or is it uh, just the... Uh... Hopefully this call will contain, you know, DNA from the Sakak people themselves. We hope that they have been urinating here too, <laughs> because this is the DNA from those cells that we're actually looking for. Eski Willerslev is in Greenland, attempting to crack the genetic code of the island's first settlers. To begin, he'll need to find a well-preserved sample of DNA from this Stone Age settlement in the form of bone, skin, or even soil. This development will really change how we look at, at human evolution and human migration, human spread across the world. For years, scientists believe the New World was largely settled about 20,000 years ago, when the first inhabitants crossed the frozen Bering Strait land bridge from Siberia to what is now Alaska. But Eski thinks there's more to the story, and he believes this 4,000-year-old tuft of hair will prove it. With this hair, Eski and his team of genetic whizzes set out to be the first to reconstruct an ancient human's entire genetic makeup, also known as the genome. You start imagining and what kind of person are we dealing with, right? And start getting really exciting. I mean, now it's a matter of breaking, you know, the genetic code and try to reconstruct this individual. By studying the genome, a scientist can piece together how someone might have looked by only using his or her DNA. To start, Eski liquefies the hair, then separates the DNA using an electrical current. Once the DNA is separated, scientists can actually cut it out like cubes of jello. With these tiny blocks, they'll begin to rebuild their ancient human. One of the first thing we actually found out was that we are talking about a male individual here. And we could see that because we start getting Y chromosome sequences coming up. And that's the only thing you find in, in males. If it had been a female, you would only have got X chromosomes coming up. Already with this information, you start wondering what exactly did this male individual look like, right? I mean, what kind of eye color, skin color, what kind of stature, what kind of adaptations did he have to living in this very harsh environment? When studying genetics, all life boils down to just four letters, A, T, C, and G. These stand for the chemicals adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. With A always pairing with T, and C always pairing with G. These letters, or bases, come in billions of combinations, giving each of us a unique genetic code. And the sequence of these letters can reveal different characteristics, even down to the shape of teeth. Here we see a single substitution from a T to a C, where the common one is a T, but he has a C. And in this particular position, that really means that he has a special type of front teeth. The inner side of the teeth kind of have a shovel form type of shape. Now, Eski can finally trace the ancient man's origins among the vast codes of human genetics. We're actually looking at around one million specific positions in the genome, and then comparing them to a number of people in the old world from northeastern Siberia, China, Europe, Africa, etc. And there, it seems like he's falling together with these old world populations from northeastern Siberia. This is revolutionary for Askey's theory on migrations. Instead of crossing the Bering Land Bridge 20,000 years ago, these settlers made an epic journey all the way across the brutal Arctic into Greenland only about 5,000 years ago. The old idea of peopling of the Americas is that people came to the New World through this land bridge at a time where you can say that, that those two land masses were still connected. But expansion into the new world definitely happened where it was 
water in between the two continents. So they must have made it either by boat or over the ice in the winter time. It's a remarkable journey. <laughs>